with Michael Iannone, the founder of Iannone Design, who not only makes furniture that is gorgeous looking, but also very eco-friendly. Thanks for talking with us today. Oh, thanks a lot, Adrian. Yeah, just tell us what your furniture is all about. All right. Well, we're uh, we're based in Philadelphia, and we focus on uh, eco-friendly uh, green modern furniture. So, um, all of our furniture, the materials have some kind of eco-friendly aspect to them, whether it be a sustainable material, uh, maybe a, like a certification um, showing that they're a green material. We use green finishes. Um, so we're really focused on on meeting that criteria for furniture, and we do a wide range of things. We do credenzas and tables and dressers and and pretty much if it's made out of wood or something like that we can make it how did you get started in the business of, of furniture what's your what's your background like i went to school for art um four years at university over here and uh through my sculpture class i started working with wood it started out just doing some kind of different like abstract sculptures and things using wood. Uh, eventually that progressed into some more functional objects like clocks and things like that. And eventually it you know, grew into actually building furniture. So kind of my senior year in college there, I basically switched from an illustration major to a, to a fine art or studio art major and started concentrating on, on woodworking and things like that. So that was kind of my progression through that sculpture class getting involved in the woodworking. When did the idea for the com the furniture company now start? I was working at um, a furniture company here in Philadelphia and um, it kind of honestly seemed like that company was uh, not going to last much longer so it was kind of like planning for the future. Uh, what am I going to do next? Fellow worker, fellow co-worker there, we got talking one day and we decided oh, let's design some furniture ourselves. We had kind of been doing it on the side, uh, both of us. We said well let's get together and collaborate and design some furniture and we'll go to the uh, ICFF show, uh, International Contemporary Furniture Fair in New York and let's just go with our furniture and see what happens. And so that was kind of the start of our company. Eventually, uh, my business partner, he decided he wanted to pursue his um, architectural career. So he, you know, he kind of left the furniture side of things. And uh, so I've been doing it on my own for quite a few years now. Do you have people working under you in terms of, of business side of it or design side of it? I pretty much handle all the the business side of it and, and all of the design uh, creative side of it. I do have one employee uh, who works as a craftsman, uh, so he helps with the actual building and fabrication of the pieces. Sounds like you're doing most of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Why did you decide to do furniture that was so eco-friendly heavy? I think there were two reasons. Um, one was... From a business standpoint, it seemed to be a way to, to make our furniture stand out. Um, we kind of started doing it just as green was really starting to become a major issue in the design world. So, you know, we kind of caught that wave at the beginning. And when you do a big trade show and you're surrounded by hundreds of other furniture makers, you know, you, you want to stand out and set yourself apart. And so I think that was definitely part of it. The other part of it was just as the green materials started to become more readily available, uh, we started to realize that they they have a lot of beautiful, unique qualities to them. And so there was a lot of aesthetic things that some of these green materials had that other materials didn't. And so then kind of became a search for, well, let's try and increase our palette of of green materials that are available and let's see what we can do with them that that maybe is different or or unique um, so i think that availability of materials uh, definitely helped us to focus even more on on making this green furniture now it's to the point where even materials that, that are green um, they may look like very similar materials that aren't green uh, it's it's become that mainstream i'll say that you know you can get maple plywood that is green. It's FSC certified. It's formaldehyde free. But if you place it next to a piece of maple plywood that that doesn't have those qualities, you can't tell the difference. But those materials are available, and so we always look for those materials um, that have those green aspects. Is that the main inspiration for the way your furniture looks? Definitely have other um, inspirations. I mean, we. I tend to not think of myself as a green furniture builder first. I, I think 
you know, I, I'm kind of more interested in the design first and the aesthetics. But when it comes to building the piece, it's almost like the green part is the, the restrictions or the criteria that has to be met as well. Um, and so that may inform what materials we do use. But as far as design influences, I mean, I'm definitely into looking at the entire range of furniture history and, and drawing from many different, you know, periods and styles. Um, I probably lean a lot towards uh, mid-century modern I, or Danish modern and things like that. I'm definitely, it's probably my favorite style of furniture, but also look at, you know, shaker furniture or, or other modern design and, and just a wide range and kind of pulling things from there. But whatever we design or are going to build, it then has to be green as well. And so that may eliminate some materials. Um, certainly, I, I haven't built a piece of furniture using wood from a rainforest in <laughs> a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th those are the kind of things that we kind of say, all right, I, I'm not going to use rosewood. It's kind of out of the question. So I, I got to use something else for this piece. Well, how about locally sourced walnut? You know, I, I'm getting this local. I, I know where it's coming from. You know, that'll meet the criteria. And it's a dark wood and it's very beautiful. So let's go with that. So it's those kind of decisions uh, kind of come into play when it actually comes time to, you know, to build the piece. It sounds like you're very in touch with what's going on in the design world. Do you really check in with other designers and, and what's going on with, with other companies very often, or do you kind of keep to your own? You know, in, in Philly, there's a lot of woodworkers. There's a very tight woodworker uh, community, so I'm constantly exposed to that aspect of things. Now, I can't say that the majority of those woodworkers are also interested in in green design. Um, some of them are, but I definitely, I mean, the internet, of course, is a huge resource. Blogs and websites and things that I do check on a daily basis to kind of see, you know, what's going on and what other people are doing in, in green design and even design that maybe isn't green. Um, I like looking at a lot of uh, architectural design and houses and, and seeing what's going on with that. And since you do what it sounds like almost everything uh, for your company. What does a typical day look like? Is there a typical day? No, I wouldn't say there's a typical day. I don't probably build as much as I used to. And that's a good and a bad thing. Like sometimes I really miss just being able to go into the wood shop and not have to answer emails or quote out custom jobs, you know, or, or handle all of that in business. And sometimes it's nice to just go into the shop and, you know, basically build all day or, or actually do woodworking all day. And it's rare that I get to do that anymore. So we have our retail line. We also do custom work and, and we do different projects here in Philly. So, you know, we have a pretty varied workload, I say, from week to week. Like how many custom projects would you say that you, you do a month? Like, is there a, an average? Are you doing a lot more custom than maybe working on retail? You know, it's changed over the, the course of years of our business. Obviously, as the economy has fluctuated, so has, I would say, um, both aspects of that, the custom and, and the retail work. Um, this year, I, I would th say that custom work has probably been more of what we've been doing uh, as opposed to retail. And usually our, our custom work, like say here in Philadelphia, are, are much larger projects like doing all the cabinets for a kitchen or, or doing the kitchen cabinets and the master bathroom and maybe some other things in, in a single residence here in the city. So those projects are definitely a lot more involved and take uh, a lot more time than you know uh, some of the furniture orders that we have take. Um, so currently I would say, yeah, we're, we're definitely doing more, more custom work. We work with interior designers. We work with architects, um, all over the country. Sometimes they have designs already pretty polished for us. Sometimes they just have a basic function that they need and some dimensions. And so we'll work with them and, and develop that project from start to finish. What new and exciting things are on the horizon for your company? Yeah, I'm starting to try and get an early jump on my uh, debut of new products. So I'm really looking forward to kind of doing something that's very heavily based on, on traditional shaker furniture. Uh, and of course, making it contemporary and putting our own spin on it and keeping it green as well. Um, so that's one thing I'm kind of excited about. Uh, right now, I'm prototyping also a table uh, using some of our scrap waste wood that we make at the shop. We have a lot of scraps of plywood lying around around that have kind of been 
accumulating, you know, over a couple of years. And I was like, you know, I, I need to do something with these, this scrap wood and make it useful and repurpose it. And then I'm hoping to kind of start to do some smaller accessory things, maybe some home office things, or, you know, we do some things with laser cut cork um, designs. And so I'm trying to think about adapting that. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Michael. Thanks a lot. For more information about Michael Iannone, you can visit his website at iannonedesign.com. You've been listening to a Too Modern Designer interview. For more fun podcasts, inspiring design posts, and design advice, check out the blog at toomodern.com.